for the Christian, it's not a question of whether to support Israel or not. It's not even an option. Again, we see, I will bless those who bless you. That, that should be enough. If it's not, I will curse those who curse you. And if that's not enough, we're told in Psalm 122 that we need to be praying for the peace of Jerusalem. And may they prosper who love you. Psalm 122, verse 6. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. May they prosper who love you. And in verse 7 says, peace be within your walls and prosperity within your palaces. I love to let Jewish people know that I I love Israel and I'm I'm praying for the peace of Jerusalem. Shalom, Yerushalayim. Now, understand that when we pray for the peace of Jerusalem, when is peace going to come to Jerusalem? We've been trying to work out peace for 2,000 years there. There's going to be a false peace for 42 months. But I mean, when is real lasting peace going to come to Israel? Well, I mean, people on a peace process, and we're going to mention something that's pretty mind-blowing here in a minute. But let me, again, Psalm 122, you and I need to be praying for the peace of Jerusalem. That's the next life lesson. We should pray for the peace of Jerusalem. We should pray for the peace of Jerusalem. And next time you encounter a Christian and you begin to pick up on any any anti-Semitic things, ask them, say, are you praying for the peace of Jerusalem like the Bible encourages us to? I mean, it, it doesn't have to be some epic prayer of biblical proportions. I mean, just, you know, God... Bring peace to to Jerusalem. And understand, when will that lasting peace come to Jerusalem? When the Prince of Peace comes to Jerusalem, amen? So when we we pray for the peace of Jerusalem, we're actually praying for the Prince of Peace to come to Jerusalem, and we can all agree on that, amen? Praise God. 